These fish belong in a horror movie. Let's see how. What the heck? What was that? That's a fish? That's, nah, that's a fish? That's a fish? What the heck am I watching? That's a fish? And you tell me these are fish. These are fish. These demons. You know, the greatest trick Hollywood ever pulled was convincing the world that sharks are the only things to fear in the water. There be monsters. Those are demons. In the last video, we talked about how sharks might just be the most misunderstood creatures in nature, with a PR team that works about as hard as a whiteout's brain after six rounds of CTE. They've been done so dirty, they've actually overshadowed wow. the other ichthyological insanity spawned from Satan's septic tank. These are seven fish that should honestly terrify you more than any shark. This isn't really to substitute one fear for another, but I do and y'all are telling me that sharks are the scariest thing ever. But you got this big mouth fish over here doing some crazy stuff, huh? Okay. Yeah, I believe it. But I do think these fish could make a much more traumatizing, nightmare inducing horror flick than Jaws. And it starts right here. Bro, get Those that off my screen. To a pair of Arapaimas, also known as a Piruku. You've definitely seen them before. Does this video ring a bell? No. no. It definitely rang his. It's one of the biggest freshwater middle fingers nature forgot to vault, usually growing to over six feet long and 200 something pounds. It's bad enough those are NBA point guard measurements, but the beefiest <laughs> ones can get to 10 feet in length and weigh over 400 pounds. That thing can swallow me. That fish can swallow me whole. I'm only 5'7", chat. I'm only 5'7". That thing can open his mouth and gobble me the f*** up, bruh. See, now I see why, like, I would never go into the ocean. There's a reason why black people can't swim. Because black people don't put themselves in situations where they could get eaten up like this. Usually eats other fish to go with fruits and seeds, but also birds. And I didn't even see the fish. Chat, I don't even see the fish. I'm never touching water again. Usually eats other fish to go with fruits and seeds, but also birds and allegedly even monkeys sitting on branches too close to water. Monkeys? If you don't believe that, it's because you haven't We're seen cooked. them hunt. They're explosively quick and the aquatic black hole has been known to confuse feet for fish and violently pull people underwater. One zookeeper reportedly made the mistake of trying to retrieve a glove that had fallen into an arapaima pool Fuck and in a split second got his hand, wrist, and several fingers broken. There's also the fact that a refrigerator sized fish will yeet themselves out of water in self defense. And let's talk about that defense. The plus size bite chair is covered oh in gosh. heavily armored scales, not only tough enough to tank piranha attacks, locals historically use them as nail files. They've also used their tongues as scrapers, since these fish have teeth growing out of a bony tongue that can be used to effectively crush struggling prey against. That is the ugliest fish. I've seen in a long time. And thank God I've never seen this in real life because I would have started praying to Jesus right then and there. Get this disgusting thing off my screen, please. Y'all been asking for me to check this video out? I'm about to throw up. You know nature got in this bag when it made a fish that could breathe air and the Antichrist of the Amazon has a modified swim bladder that was repurposed as lungs, meaning this flex of a fish can survive 24 hours out of water on one I'm done, bro. I don't want to watch no more videos like this. I'm done. It can breathe out of water. That's the one thing I can do that, it, that fish are supposed to do. They're not supposed to do that. Sharks can't come out here and start walking. I can't breathe on the water. I, can, I don't feel safe no more. I do not feel safe no more. You said 24 hours. Yo, evolution is a crazy thing. Next thing I know, that fish can walk and take me with him. I'm scared for my life, chat. Yes, I am. Once again, I'm only 5'7", bro. If this thing grew legs, I'm cooked. On one hand, that means they have to come up for air every 20 minutes or suffer the eternal shame of being a fish that finds a way to drown. But it also works out wow. for them because in low oxygen water where most fish become slow and sluggish, the air merchant menace can pretty much go on a killing streak. Now the question is, could an arapaima pack up a person? See? While there's no indication they see us as a snack, there are old stories of high-strung assault guppies effectively drowning people, likely by knocking them unconscious and leaving them incapacitated underwater. Not him, he's fine. You can unclench guidelines, he's good. But one man that almost wasn't was Jeremy Wade. He probably needs no introduction, but long story short, he's a zoologist who hosted the show River Monsters, which oh. ended, but only because he caught every fish nature had to offer. Really? But he almost caught an early life retirement after a pissed off Pima struck him square in the chest and nearly caused irreversible damage to his heart. Not only did this fish nearly have a singing, 
suspect wasn't more than 90 pounds. Remember, the overachievers can press the scales at 400 or, you know, 180 kilograms worth of kill a man. So yeah, the Arapaima mm. is a shack-sized, air-breathing, armor-plated predatory vacuum, and strangely enough, it's not the fish I'm most scared of in the Amazon. But we'll get to that. That's only the first fish, y'all. We've only seen three minutes of this video, and he said that that's not the scariest fish up here. What else am I about to see? How am I going to have more nightmares tonight? That's the real question. The piranha actually isn't. If you remember from an earlier video, piranhas might be just as misunderstood as sharks. They're mm. mostly just scavenging opportunists that our childhoods convinced us were way more of an issue. You cannot say the same for their cousins found in the Congo basin of Central Africa. Cousin. The Goliath tigerfish can grow nearly five feet long, over a hundred pounds, and they're what people were told piranhas what? are times ten. They're in the same order, but where piranhas are primarily a swimming cleanup oh, crew, tigerfish actively hunt for their bodies. And you'll find out, nature built this prehistoric problem to do exactly that. Oh they my have gosh. sharp dagger-like teeth that many swear are comparable to that of a great white. Although I personally see them as what? more conical, like a crocodile. Which is a coincidence since the saltwater variety are their only natural predators. But of course, the swimming expletive has also been known to murk smaller crocs. They have eerily strong eyesight to track prey, special organs to detect the vibrations they make underwater, and they're strong enough to brute force their way through the turbulent waters of their hunting grounds. They're considered one okay. of the toughest freshwater fish time left behind, and tigerfish are even on record snatching birds. Did that fish just try to murk a human? He wanted a little snack. See, that's why I don't play games like this, bro. I don't play games like this. What possessed that fish to even do that? And if he had good aim, the fish could have ripped his face off. Like imagine going to the hospital or going to like a date and be like, what happened to your face? I got bit by a piranha's cousin. It just don't sound good. It sounds like a lie. Not just birds, but swallows. Some of the fastest and most what? maneuverable out there. <laughs> Scientists studying them watched as 300 birds got permanently grounded by tigerfish in just over two weeks. They're so feared that in many places, they're only known by one name, Benga, meaning the dangerous fish. There's even a story of a young girl wearing a belt made out of bottle caps in order to ward off evil spirits. Ironically, it did the exact opposite and attracted a tigerfish who apparently confused the bottle caps for fish scales and nearly bisected the girl. Oh Allegedly, it's my an extremely gosh. fast explosive vice grip with almost zero prey prejudice. And I'd still Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Wait, you telling me a little girl was wearing bottle caps to ward off demons? Where do people get this type of stuff from, bro? Bottle caps? to ward off demons what in the superstitious what what that don't even make sense to me bro somebody explain the lore i know one of y'all nerds in the comments know why the hell was she wearing bottle caps out of anything that you could put on your body you put on bottle caps some rattles she sound like a rattling snake out here and think nothing was gonna come for her damn all right peter that girl i ain't mean to come at you just you know it just sounds dumb as and I'd still rather take a bite from them than the fish up next. And that's cause next is the Kandiru. Kandiru. And a lot of y'all already know what road we're going down. The Kandiru is a tiny parasite in the Amazon, also nicknamed the vampire fish for their habit of invading the gills of larger fish and scraping the insides to feed off their blood. And with backward facing spines and a powerful bite, it's nearly impossible to shake it off before it completes its liquid transaction. The horror comes from the legend of Kandiru being attracted to the chemicals in urine and swimming up the urethra of unlucky humans. Oh my gosh. It's going to get inside my little pee pee and it's going to make it swell. Oh, chat. I can feel it. I can feel it, bruh. Imagine a little tapeworm going up your urethra, your pee hole. And next thing you know, your dick is a balloon all big and bloated and shit. Oh my gosh, I don't want to hear no more. Kandiru being attracted to the chemicals in urine and swimming up the urethra of unlucky humans and getting stuck up there. A fate that takes surgery to reverse. Imagine a serrated, sentient toothpick in your bathing suit business and you'll see why the violation with gills is so feared. But how much of this is even real? Most of the reports of people getting penetrated by peenfish are really sus at best. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's a lot to take in. You said penetrated by peenfish? Peen fish casual you know what you're doing these words i need you to change them a little bit apparently they're not even attracted to the ammonia and human urine in the first place there's a good chance that the can do controversy came from european settlers coming home from long expeditions and telling these long exaggerated stories to anyone who'd listen for status and attention yeah but basically mm. they were probably lying for clout 
You have to remember, the whole piranha skinning a cow thing spawned from locals staging an event to impress the president. The truth is, your chances of peeing in the Amazon and getting frontal probed by a fish are about as much as you getting meal prepped by a shark or getting struck by lightning. Oh. My bad. And getting struck by lightning. That being said, I'd rather oh. get tag teamed by the pets of Poseidon oh. and the forces of Zeus than have a bloodluster up my urethra, no frankly. If the odds oh, ain't zero, they're just too high for me. But I'll happily take a Kanduru to the Manduru, then run into aquatic op number four. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that real? This real? What's happening here, bro? You gotta explain that because it seems like there's a chance my PP might get penetrated by one of these small fish. And like you said, if it ain't zero, it's too high for me. So you telling me I can go out there to a lake, take a piss, and next thing I know, my PP a balloon? That's all I care about, bro. I can't take no chances with that. Bloodluster up my urethra, no Franklin. If the odds ain't zero, they're just too high. He said urethra, no Franklin, and I just heard that. Being said, I'd rather get getting meal prepped by a shark or getting struck by lightning. Oh my bad. And getting struck by lightning. That being said, I'd rather get tag teamed by the pets of Poseidon and oh. the forces of Zeus than have a bloodluster up my urethra, no Franklin. If the odds ain't said zero, that. they're just too high for me. Urethra but I'll happily take a Kanduru to the Manduru, then run into aquatic op number four. In fact, I'm so afraid of it, I actually had to break my own rule for this video. The Humboldt squid obviously isn't a fish, but it's the closest thing to a living nightmare on this list. Let's be clear, at five feet, about 100 pounds, there are bigger squid. What sets Humboldts apart is they can hunt in packs of over a thousand. Damn! Yeah, that, that's three zeros like a Tony oh Snell stat line. Nicknamed Diablo Rojo, there are old fishermen tales of men falling overboard, getting swarmed, and never coming back up. There's also stories of them curiously approaching divers before flipping and trying to rip their masks off. But who needs stories when marine biologist Alex Kerstich can tell you about the time several homicidal squids grabbed him and attempted to drag him down into the dark maw of the abyss. It gets worse when you realize what exactly happens when a red devil decides to take you to hell. Humboldts aren't just highly intelligent, they're covered in tiny red chromatophores that they can use to rapidly change color in order to communicate with each other. Really? It's like Morse code, but for Crip and Calamari. We don't know exactly what it means, but there's a good chance if a Humboldt confronts you and starts violently flashing red, it could be telling a bunch of others you can't see that you're free eats. So likely the last thing you'll see is pulsing red, before you get eaten alive. It doesn't help that satanic cephalopods are known for speed eating and are notorious for stripping fish to the bones faster than fishermen can reel them. Add a beak that can oh. easily slice flesh and a bite force that can reportedly crack bone. And I think you see why I'm not exaggerating when I say I'll deal with every other fish on this list than a pack of predatory color coordinating squid. They're that strong and they fight in groups. That is a demon group, bro. That's a bloodhound pack, bro. What? Nah, I can see why he said that this fish is the one that he wouldn't mess with. Because if you see one, you're most likely going to see a thousand. That's a lot of fish to be battling against. And they all have the same power level. Like, they all can bite through bones. That's a nightmare, bro. I don't even know why I watch these type of videos. Because all it does is raise my anxiety. Like, now all I'm thinking about is if I go on a cruise and I fall overboard. Next thing I know, I'm going to get jumped by some red squids that want to take my body apart. <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I don't care what logic says. There's no doubt in my mind this squid would eat a human if they thought they could. Why? Humboldt squid only live about a year. That rapid growth in a short time means they'll rarely pass up an easy meal, even if it's their own kind. Humboldts what? are highly cannibalistic, and they will not hesitate to turn on a weak or injured member of their own hunting party. There was a study done off That's the coast crazy. of Chile that found that out of over 2,000 squid, more than half held the remains of their own kind in their stomachs. It sounds to me that anything they see as weaker than them is something they can feed off, and the only saving grace for us is they usually only press things smaller than they are. But you don't even have to be seen as food for affiliated squids. So little kids? Like it will eat a little kid? I heard that. I heard that. I know I'm listening, bro. He basically just said that it will eat a child if it could. I'm good on that, bro. But to me, the most disturbing aspect of getting assaulted by squids is, even if you escape, if you panic and surface too fast, you can get the bends and past tense anyway. That type of psychological horror is what puts the Humboldt here. And wouldn't oh. you know, emotional damage is another symptom of finding out about the next fish. Because hmm? now we got the stonefish. Not one of, but the most venomous fish known to man. It's the most? with verrugo toxin. And symptoms of getting stung include crippling pain, shock, tissue death, 
and even paralysis. And speaking of pain, you can be in agony for over 12 hours, and it's enough of an eternal jihad to cause hallucinations. Anecdotally, there have been tourists who've stepped on a stonefish only to beg their doctors to chop off the whole foot. Oh gosh. And there's the added threat of, if you don't get out of the water quick enough, it won't even be the venom. You can get paralyzed and catch a stage fatality to drowning. Even if you survive, you can still suffer permanent nerve damage and severe muscle atrophy. But that all wouldn't even be that bad if the stonefish wasn't nature's manifestation of a move. The most venomous animals on the planet <laughs> usually dress with bright colors to warn the rest of the population that they're packing. Stonefish okay. decided to do exactly none of that and instead cosplays as a stone, only to mortally punish you for its camouflage working. Like I said, it's like having invisibility, but also serving a death penalty every time someone steps on your foot. So basically, if I ever get in some water, I wear some shoes. All right, I got you, I got you, because you know what I'm saying? The fish doesn't bother anybody, but damn, I won't be able to see it if I'm walking in water. See, this is why everybody needs to just be in their own habitat. You know what I'm saying? Humans stay on earth, you know what I'm saying? Rocks and, and what are these continents? and the fishes and the sharks and the squids stay underwater. All this could be prevented with us never going in the water. I'm an advocate for never going in the water, y'all. And this is why as black people, we would never be conquistadors, explorers. Cause I know I speak for a lot of people when I say this, but I do not care to go up, down, middle left right i want to stay where the fuck i'm at and i don't want to learn about anything that don't want to learn about me am i right <laughs> i'm not about to keep playing with it bro no and you got to add the fact that there are another fish that can survive 24 hours out of the water and they have a literal switchblade okay. growing out of their forehead yeah okay. i knew there were a problem ever since one nearly permanent nigel thornberry a stone cloaking toxic minefield of misery but with stonefish anti-venom being the second most administered in australia today if you get stung your chances of surviving are actually pretty good not like the next fish because for this one there is no antidote like evil, bro that, this looks like an evil face like a beyblade evil face chat y'all cannot tell me that this is not an evil face i'm looking at a demon right now i am looking at satan's minion the stonefish might be the most venomous fish but the puffer fish is arguably the most poisonous thing alive i've heard about this thumb on the difference if it bites you and you die it's venomous if you bite it and you become a was it's poisonous and few things are more poisonous than puffer tetrodotoxin which is 1200 times more of a death sentence than cyanide Tetrodotoxin mm. interferes with signals between nerves and muscles, causing oh. muscle paralysis and a total shutdown. And of course, the fugu blowfish is considered a delicacy. But if the chef misses a single cut, even by a little, you're instantly on the clock. So you why even eat it? Happens. Why even eat it? Why even eat it? If you can die, why take that chance? I don't get it, bro. I don't understand why people do the things that they do. You could possibly die from this if I cut it the wrong way, but huh, here you go, take some meat. You won't know that happened until your face goes numb and your lips and tongue get this weird prickling feeling. <laughs> Then, you'd suddenly get a splitting headache and dizziness to go with vomiting and diarrhea as your body desperately tries to purge the poison. But it's already too late and you'd start getting paralyzed, starting with the hands and feet, but slowly spreading out. And by this point, you likely can't even call for help. Mm -hmm. Finally, it'd get harder and harder to breathe until you notice the room slowly fade to black, leading to either a coma, seizure, or just death. The permanent kind. Tetrodotoxin essentially flips a kill switch in your body and there is no antidote. The only treatment is hooking you up to a respirator to breathe for you and praying it passes. The poison puffball is such a problem, it makes you forget they also have teeth that can bite clean through your finger. In fact, it's what? more than enough to violate a scorpion. And I don't even know how to describe what they do to crabs. Turning crustacean into crustacean with a smile, no less, is criminal. There's nothing funny about getting caught in that bite, with reports of pufferfish mutilating the genitals of men. In one case in 2008, where a Cambodian child had his uh, coin purse sliced in half by a pufferfish. He had his balls sliced in half by a pufferfish. Let's talk about all these animals that want to attack my Johnson. And I don't know if y'all seen my second channel video when I was talking about that I need my, because I need the bus. But all this is telling me right now is 
that I should never step in the fucking water again. I'm not going to the beach. I'm not going to the pool. Don't ask me to step in water at all. The only time I'm touching water is when I'm getting in the shower. And I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna take a shower with my underwear on to protect my for real, for real. One of these little fishes might get in my shower head and next thing I know, I'm cooked. I know y'all seen that parasitic one. That's the one I'm scared of because I can't see already. I take these off, I can't even see the damn camera anymore, bro. And unlike the Kanduru, this ain't a myth. Have your privates out by a puffer and you might just get... <laughs> so that's six of the Sinister Seven. But before we see, get to bro? the last one, we got honorable mentions. The fact that there's a fish that weaponized electricity enough to decommission a caiman and we just accept that is kind of crazy. And the thing is, it might not even be the voltage, but it's getting knocked out in shallow water that'll get you. Swordfish are one of the fastest things in the sea. They also have a built-in melee weapon equipped capable of inflicting life-altering harm. In yeah. 2015, a Hawaiian man was fatally struck in the chest while trying to catch one. Another man in Malaysia bled to death after a swordfish yeeted itself out of the water and also RNG'd him in the chest. Swordfish are also on record shanking sharks and even bleeding out sea turtles. The sheep's head fish. Why? R really only because of that mouth. Shibophobics be damned. The Titan Triggerfish is a highly aggressive honey badger with gills capable of dishing out severe injuries with the same teeth they use for crunching coral, that sea urchins, cute though. and even a crown of thorns starfish. The Trigger might as well be named after their temper, and this foot and a half vibe check is a big reason why beginner divers never go back in the water. Speaking of big, the Goliath Grouper. At 8 feet up to 800 pounds, the fish the size of a small car, the Goliath Grouper. At 8 feet up That's a toilet? Eight feet. I don't even gotta say what I'm gonna say, man. Y'all know what I'm gonna say. I'm not stepping in water. To 800 pounds, the fish the size of a small car feels more like a leftover Jurassic prop. Lucky for us, most divers describe it as a gentle giant with the temperament of a St. Bernard. Although a St. Bernard didn't allegedly swallow an entire kid in the Florida Keys. What? Allegedly. But since we're on the subject, the last fish on this list are catfish. And catfish. yeah, that's kind of cheating. There's over 3,000 species of catfish, even including the genital jihad, the Kandiru. Catfish are like the trash compactors of the fish family, which isn't a problem until you see just how big they can really get. And once a catfish gets big enough, there aren't a lot of things alive they won't try to eat. We've seen armadillos, turtles, and even unaware seagulls get fored by a catfish. Armadillos? There's a species in France that figured out how to stalk and hunt bathing city pigeons. Another learned to wait by cave entrances to suck up any exhausted bats that fall in. There was even a catfish nicknamed Kuno the Killer who terrorized a German lake and somehow caught and ate someone's dog. <laughs> it ate a dog. The fish ate a dog. I don't have anything else to say, Your Honor. My case is right here. This is why I think going into water should be outlawed and everybody should listen because if you step in the water, you can turn into that dog. That's my case, y'all. That's my case, bro. This is why I would never step into water again. Written by True God. I got y'all. I'm going to sign off on this mug because it's over for me. Basically, they're all the shit I've talked about pelicans being just in fish form. The question is if a catfish has ever eaten a live human, and it isn't even if they would, but if they could. The Wells catfish can grow to 10 feet long and cap out at 300 pounds. The Macomb catfish can also get to 10 feet, and the heaviest one ever recorded was pushing 650 pounds. If there's a catfish that could stomach a human, it should be one of these, but there's a slightly smaller catfish that was believed to be a legit man eater. In the late 90s and early 2000s, a series of fatal attacks on people in the Gully River had people convinced there was something in the water hunting humans. Mm. In these attacks, victims were suddenly pulled underwater in front of people, only for their bodies to never be recovered. In 2007, Atal Kumar was swimming with friends when he was violently dragged underwater, and while he was never seen again, friends caught a glimpse of something, something that they could only describe as an elongated pig. Crocs and bull sharks were considered, but the prime suspect ended up being the goonch. At about over the 6 gooch. feet, 200 pounds, the goonch is usually smaller than the whales and the mekong. 
but it's feared that the practice of burning funeral pyres by the river led to the equal opportunists developing a taste for human flesh. And while it's a stretch to say a corpse happy catfish could swallow an adult, it becomes a little less believable with children. There's no solid proof of a catfish catching a person, but they for sure can off one. The biggest ones can easily overpower you, if not just knock you out and drown you. Not to mention a majority are venomous, with those spines putting both experienced fishermen and oblivious bystanders in the hospital. Catfish are venomous too? I didn't know that. I literally never knew that. Maybe certain types of catfish? There's no way all catfish are venomous. There's no way, right? Chat. Please tell me there's no way, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh. They also have a nasty sandpaper-like bite that can easily draw blood. But what really makes them a living horror movie is their intelligence. The ones packing up pigeons, they weren't always doing that, but they pretty much ate everything else around them and were forced to adjust. So what? it's anyone's guess what could happen if they gain a taste for humans. And with catfish being swimming tongues with over 175,000 taste buds across their bodies, yeah, I doubt acquiring taste takes long. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make okay. sure you drink water, hug your mother, try not to get catfished out here. If you'd like to see me- I'm not getting catfished, bro. Trust and believe, trust and believe. All this video did was tell me moral reasons of why I shouldn't get in the water.